They found oh, no. Nug. Ha ha ha, got you to look. There we go. All patched up. Hi guys, Yarushien here. Welcome back to another video. I might have to apologize because I'm making two videos hopefully this week. Hopefully. In case you guys may have not remembered last week when I was talking about Missouri and all that fun stuff, I was talking about how Akihisa Ikeda had come out with a one shot. I wasn't exactly sure when that one shot came out and I wasn't exactly sure uh, what the name was. I just remember reading it because I found it on Reddit. It was also done with, I think, one of the guys from Death Note, so it was really strange and really weird. However, in the most recent update to my life in figuring out more about Akahisa Ikeda and also reading his recent wiki, uh, is that he came out with a brand new manga, which looks really, really interesting and slightly cool and i want to know more about it and so i read the first six chapters that are free currently over on viz media this is not me promoting viz in any of the circumstances it's just that they are the people that officially license the manga and that you can read the first six chapters for free right now if you really really want to and i really recommend reading it mainly because i have a few opinions that i really like about it but also there's a few opinions that i feel like i want to cover before i give you you know my full recommendation. So this is my first impressions of reading the first six chapters of Ghost Reaper Girl. All right, so in any description that I possibly can without having to show too much about it, Ghost Reaper Girl is a interesting story to say at the very least, as this is not a high school setting. It is not a isekai setting. It is set in the real world where it is also the possibility of the supernatural and ghosts and demons and creatures of the night that enter into our world and cause havoc. And recently, there was a breakout in hell. And because there was a breakout in hell, now a whole bunch of ghosts have made it into the real world and are causing problems. Which leads to our main character, her name, Chloe, which is really weird because most of the time whenever I think of main characters, they are often in association to a Japanese traditional name, especially in the narrative. But Chloe is not that. And also her backstory, while slightly revealed, is not common in most Japanese stories and media and also this is the really weird being of her age being that she's 28 and she's trying to break out in the acting scene which I feel really close to in a real weird way being 26 and trying to break into the acting scene. It's super interesting because this breaks away from the general story of just like hey it's got to be this 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 and this in order for this story to be successful which it totally is not. I think that this is also really interesting because this is also a story of like having general adult responsibilities and how do I cover for those responsibilities and how do I continue to live a constant life uh, without having you know this brand new thing that has entered my life to be a drain on that so the story as per its narrative it tells basically Chloe meeting this guy who is making a contract with her so that way she can gain powers because she has a long lineage of being uh, I guess paranormally uh, attentive or that her genetics have allowed her to connect with the spirit world much more easier than most human beings which yes that's one of the general like anime you know manga tropes of the main character but to be honest as long as it gives me a sense of like there is a reason why this character is here in the story I don't have to like say it's like oh well that's you know rather convenient of course it's a story the conveniency of the main character is how this character relates to this world. For example, why would Raymond Red Reddington from Blacklist be interested in Megan Boone if she wasn't a part of the FBI and why her job is so important to what she does in that story? That's just me. So basically, this guy who basically looks like a much older version of Skune Aono, which I understand when it comes to mangaka and they are interested in the design of their main characters that they often continue to make the same design for that main character so that way it looks very close to something that they already know personally. If you guys have read Eden Zero, uh, it's just basically another story that 
the main character that looks like Natsu and the female character that looks like uh, Lucy. But one of the other big things is that there is a mechanical version of Happy, which I'm just like, that that doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, it's been six years since Akihisa Ikeda has made a new manga. So that's why I'm excited. So this opens up the possibility of allowing our main character to enter into a realm of, you know, the spiritual uh, exorcism kind of deal, which I think is really cool because then we get to see more and more. And as Akihisa Ikeda often flexes his ability to create some really interesting looking creatures, especially with his artistic design. And one of the big things I really cannot press enough when it comes to Akihisa Ikeda is his designs. Oh my God, if you have never seen some of the absolute crazy well-drawn stuff that Akihisa Ikeda has designed over the past several years, especially in Rosario Vampire, then please do yourself a favor and go and look at some of his art design. It is so clean. It is so awesome. And he also loves swapping between the very sharp and intense looking designs with this very bright, cartoonishly, very anime-esque design, which allows you to understand and get a flow of the story. So that way you feel like, you know, it isn't always so hardcore and serious and it has to be super intense. And then it breaks and allows there to be a softer, you know, respite instead of this constant need to make every panel have to be so viciously popping. I don't know. I don't know, that's just me, but as the story continues on with the first chapter, uh, the main character deals with uh, the, the trying to get cast in projects so that way, you know, she can learn to make or her main goal is to make the world slightly happier or brighter. And I think that's relatively interesting when you're making a character, you have a goal. And one of her main goals is to be super talented or to be super well known that she is capable of making the world better. So her famosity is that drive. She wants to be a big heroine superstar so that way she can make the world happier, which, you know, that is a good end goal if you're telling a long form story. Think of a uh, like One Piece. You know, the reason why the story has gone on for as long as it has is because Luffy is still after the One Piece. I would say the same thing with Naruto, you know, you really know that the story comes to its conclusion when Naruto becomes Hokage. I don't really care much for Boruto and I don't know what Boruto's goals are, but I don't feel like that they are worth any, you know, time, my time at all. I said that weird. So and at least I know what the goal is for the main character and also that there is a goal for each side character as well. So this character, Kai, who is basically this uh, the spirit and also the embodiment of chain, I guess. I guess he's like a chain spirit, which is really interesting because it represents like his connection to wanting to, you know, get rid of the wicked. And he also has this um, complex. So basically she thanks him for saving her after, you know, a bunch of ghosts try to assault her and then she tries to go home, but then she gets assaulted again and she's like, oh man, I really wish I didn't turn down this guy's offer for helping me more because I really should have just done that. And then he shows up again and he's like, hey, yo, I'm a spirit too, but if we make a contract, I can help you and we could actually see what your powers really are, what your skills are. And so she's like, I, cool, you have my permission. Then it goes into this whole magical girl deal, which I think is hilarious. And so basically the giant scythe that she's carrying is Kai himself. And that he is basically this smiling face, which I absolutely love. I think it's still a slight reference to uh, Soul Eater, but the connection with that is, is that she's able to use the chains that he uses and also uses a giant scythe which cuts the souls from the people's body so that way that the people are safe, but the evil spirits that have invaded them 
are removed, which I think that is really cool as a storytelling option because I can only imagine what that would actually be like if an enemy who is still a human being is on the opposing force. He can't simply just kill somebody. You have to be an evil spirit to do so. So that's chapter one. And then it goes to chapter two, and this is a little bit sadder, which I think is something really interesting because it involves a cat spirit and it involves, there is a curse on them, a curse of hunger, which will reveal a little bit more about the main character as she had originally come from what was known as the slums. Basically, she had no life before when she was a child. She was basically just destined to die and to destined to die alone. And when it came down to, you know, this big fight and it felt so surreal when she actually removed the curse from the spirit. And then basically this spirit is just a really adorable and very well drawn cat man and basically he commits to wanting to be contracted as a familiar to Chloe as well. I really love these first two chapters. I'm, I know I'm glossing over the second one but really I don't want to give away everything to be 100% honest. I do want people to actually read this manga with only six chapters and i think another chapter coming out next week i really 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 cannot press upon everyone enough to please go read it it is super amazing and super awesome i'm very happy that akihisa ikeda is out again making a brand new manga and that we get the opportunity to read it as early as possible that being noted do i have a few problems with this manga yes and it, and i'll Explain it to the best way possible because I don't want to sound really mean. I really love this art style. I really am enjoying the story so far, but it does have a certain problem. It seems like over the past mm, six years and when looking back at any of his former manga that he had done, it feels like he hasn't fully grown out of what he knows and that is to not understanding flow like i said there are a lot of comedic breaks that allow you to have a breath of respite when it comes to these very seriously drawn moments and the drawings are absolutely consistent and amazing however the pacing in it feels really odd. The dialogue doesn't feel, you know, as structured as I had found it to be when I read Rosario Vampire. But then again, I feel like it might just be because he's slightly rusty. That being noted, uh, this was also a really weird read, mainly because when Viz decided to post the uh, the licensed version of the manga by the request of Akihisa Ikeda himself, he is making it to go from left to right, where commonly when you read a manga, it is from right to left. And so when I'm reading the manga, I have a natural tendency to go from right to left, making the dialogue seem weird at first until I have to remember that it is left to right. So when you read this manga, make sure you are reading it from left to right. Also, another big thing is that I feel like the design is I guess in some ways it feels like it's still that early 2010 to now where it feels like that kind of design especially when looking at Chloe's first costume it's very representative of you know very very you know eye-catchy design and to be quite honest yes that is something that happens for every manga light novel and so on and so forth but I do feel a lot better knowing that this character in the way that she is designed is not designed to be, you know, a huge piece of sex appeal. It is simply the design of like something that looks awesome on paper. And that's something that I personally do enjoy. To give you guys a little bit of context as to what I'm saying here is that I don't personally enjoy Hestia's design. It is obviously in order to get people's eyes onto the book. And that's the reason why people do like Don Machi, mainly because it's easy to make fun of Hestia. It's easy to look at that design and be all like, ooh, I want to read it. 
it because there was this giant titty, you know, short girl on the cover of the page. And this could be made the same argument for Uzaki as well. But when I look at this brand new character, when I look at Ghost Reaper Girl and the way that she is designed, the way that Chloe is designed, it isn't merely sex appeal. It is actually an interesting, well-drawn, very dynamic design, which does not take away from the story which I feel like that there was a lot more confidence in the concept that this is a story of hunting down ghosts and finding out about her past and helping out brand new friends and bringing together, you know, new familiars that she can use as a team is something that I personally find very interesting. This isn't about the design of the characters anymore. It is also to introduce the concept of the story and not to just get eyes on the manga. So I think that's pretty much in my mind, you know, one of those big things when it comes to this whole design and this whole manga. I feel like it hasn't fully escaped the trajectory of the early 2000s. However, once again, there is only six chapters so far. And if you guys are interested, I might even do something with these six chapters so far. Or I really am looking forward to chapter seven. And if I have to start paying in order to read this manga, I fucking will. Because it's actually really cool and it's really awesome. With as many that have been released thus far... I really do actually hope that this manga may get an anime in a few years from now. Of course, a lot of this does take, you know, a lot of time, which, you know, thank God. And if Akihita Ikeda can end up hooking up with a studio to make a brand new anime and be able to actually see it to its completion and or to see it where it's very committed to following the story that Akihisa Keita brings to the table, then that is something that I would enjoy to actually see something legitimately awesome be made by this man's mind. I, I know that I like gushing over some of my favorite authors and creators and mangaka. I, I, I do want to take the time and actually show some love to people that I feel like never really got the full stride that they deserve. And while it was amazing and awesome that Akihisa Ikeda got to release 24 volumes of his full Rosario Vampire story, I felt like it was kneecapped by the anime and it was kneecapped by certain people with certain intentions that felt like it was just every wrong way to treat this story and now that he is able to create a new one and now that it is trajectory is in the air i want to see if it actually hits terminal velocity and we can finally escape what was the last decade or so of just terrible terrible anime that's not to say that there were uh, no good animes there was plenty of good animes during the early 2000s and 2010s i'm just saying you know, it, 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 there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot more promise. There's a lot more promise in this project. And I really want to see it to, you know, to the big screen or to see a actual full anime release. And that's just the way that I see it. All right. That's everything I got. That's all I uh, have to say. I don't feel like making this video anymore. Thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully I will see you all in the next video. Laters.